<sighs> so you'll have to forgive the typical look of our uh, you know 35 millimeter we're shooting on the iPhone today so no nice bokeh depth of field we're going straight in because today has been an incredibly weird day so today though we're looking at a game all about the 1970s of flight so question of the day what is your favorite travel game perhaps it's trekking the world perhaps it's um, you know I don't know what's your favorite travel game let me know in the comments below what your favorite travel game is and why what about it is is it the nostalgic feel maybe like even parks uh, is it the uh, the idea of you know maybe wish casting where you want to go sometime but let me know in the bottom in the comments below what your favorite uh travel game is because today we're looking at the heyday of 1970s air travel in blue skies from rio grande games it's a game all about um, owning the biggest share of the airline market and getting into more cities and more and more advancing your company so that you can have the most customers use your service all across the united states Area control, all that sorts of stuff. Let's take a look at how it plays right now. We will come back up and talk final thoughts right now. This is Blue Skies. It is a top-down view of the United States with 1970s styles airport information boards. In case you're wondering what that art style was and what this choice is, it's not spreadsheets. It's purposely done to look like information boards. So you have different regions. There's the uh, Pacific, the Southwest, the Midwest, the Southeast, the Central, the Atlantic, the Northeast. And what's going to happen is you're going to populate these different airports with different passenger cubes out here. Notice the ones that have the little airplane symbol. Those are local airports, kind of like the show Wings, basically. They're not the non-Deltas, the non-Southwest. They're just like the um, Alabama Air or something, whatever it is like that. You're going to do that by populating through these demand cards. Everyone will get some demand cards at the beginning, but before the game starts, you're going to deal out some demand cards. And into Atlanta, you will place, or whatever your card is that you draw, you will place out of the bag of passengers a certain amount of cubes until you hit your first red cube so it's it's you keep drawing until you hit a red cube so philadelphia for instance got a first one was green second one was red and you evenly distri distribute them across currently there's only one gate at each then you're going to draw more and populate more out there that do not get the local airports now those will eventually get the local airports if they're not bought up but before the game starts everyone's going to get an opportunity to buy gates and you get six points to which to buy gates with. Now, if the if the space is empty, it's the cost listed. If it's not empty, you have to pay the buyout cost. So for instance, if the buyout cost says NA, you can't actually buy that one out. It can only stay as the local one there. Otherwise, the buyout cost would be to buy a local airport six here versus the three to buy it out. So you can actually buy it out and become the person that owns it. The reason that matters why you want to have a gate in these different cities is each passenger cube you have in your gate goes towards your income. And your income will then, of course, translate to points. And basically, you're going to keep playing. and On your turn, you're going to play a card to add to a city of your choice. So let's see, of these three cards, I would pick maybe New York, Seattle, something like that, depending on where I had an airport. You then, uh, before you do that, you can buy your gate. Then you pay your demand card. And then you're going to draw the demand cards to, to one per player to add random customers out there, which could affect either of you at random so you have your chosen uh, customers that will get added based on your hand and then you have random ones that go out there so it's a kind of a balancing factor at random you then add local gates to places that have customers but no gates and then you pass the first player marker the game ends when either the highest score has been reached or exceeded 100 or if at least one player has placed their airlines last and final gate You'll then go into scoring, in which you're going to score based on the regions, based on the points that are out there. The person who's in first place in that region will score the higher number. In a two-player game, you don't play with the second number, I don't believe. But you also only have the amount of gates available per player count. So in two players, you're only going to play with these two different gates. So it's a little bit area control with some randomness and some strategy and tactics available to you. But it's got that nice appeal of the 1970s airlines. So that is Blue Skies. Now, it is area control in a couple different ways. One, you're actually gaining income each round for the customers that you have in your gates. Now, what's cool about that is you can do a little bit of manipulation with that. And what I mean is 
as you saw, when you buy a gate on your turn, you're gonna rearrange those customers. So essentially, if someone has the entire market, they are the only gate in a, in a city, well, when you go and buy that gate, it rearranges to where they're evenly dispersed between the two, and customers will flood over to you. Same thing if you get yourself into a situation, especially in a two-player game, where one of the cities that can't be um, bought out, you can corner the market there and gain all the customers. Essentially, your other player can't get those uh, customers from somewhere like Baltimore or Atlanta. So, all in all, the theme of the game is really cool. I really enjoy the idea of doing airline, uh, you, you, you're doing this airline mogul sort of thing where you're trying to make sure that most customers use yours. It feels like Southwest versus, uh, you know, American versus Delta versus Continental and all that sort of Pan Am and all that sort of fun stuff. So really interesting. Now, let's talk about the aesthetics of the game, how it looks. At first glance, when you look down at the board, you might go, it's kind of bland. But now, and this may be just because I have an appreciation for traveling, I have an appreciation for air travel, um, because it's part of what we do, but I actually really like the aesthetic. I like the fact that it looks like those ticker boards of different airlines and airplanes and things like that. I like the fact that it looks like that, and you get to see all those uh, on the board where they are. Some of it's hard to find where Atlanta is and all these sorts of things, because they don't feel quite in the right place, even though they are, they just have to space it out. But all in all, the game looks pretty basic, but it does own that art style, the 1970s air travel, and I do like that. Uh, cubes are cubes, basically. What I do like, too, though, is you get your own little player board. It reminds me a little bit of 18 Chesapeake, where it's got that kind of nice 70s style of airlines. Each of them are different. They all have their own logos, and they're all based on colors. Purple and green are in here, so Carl and I are both happy. So uh, that is the way it looks. Now, as far as it plays, I really like the simplicity of it, honestly. I like the fact that you're going to pick a new gate to buy out there using the points to buy gates, or you can choose to opt for more points if you choose not to buy gates. Uh, once you buy the gates, you're gonna play a card. Hopefully the card you play will benefit you, and obviously most likely it will. Uh, and then you're gonna draw a card, and then you're gonna get two random cards out there. So it really does nicely mix between careful planning and then a random bonus. Now the bonus could go either way because it could really benefit your, your opponents or it could benefit you, but uh, it is interesting how it does that. It just has the, the real mix nicely of strategy and please turn out a card that will help me in my city. So all in all, I really I also really like the area control scoring at the end. Now, Carlos complaint about this was that it, once you get behind, there's no catching up. And I will have to say that even though there is the government assistance thing, it's still very hard if you get a big deficit at first to come back. So if you play with people, you need to explain to them how important it is to get those cities that will generate income early on and not just say, well, I'll pick it up later because there is no picking it up later. So that is kind of a critique on that. If you if you do not pick up points in the very first round, you're probably gonna stay behind. But at the end of the day, it's simple, it looks good, and it's fun to play. That is Blue Skies. I'm a fan of it. Carla was not so much of a fan of it, but just so you know uh, where we stand, she doesn't really like area control, and this is straight area control, top to bottom. So I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Uh, at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you. But yeah, go pick up Blue Skies if you like area control. I should have said that.